Hi, my name is Kim Duncan, and I'm with the University of Wisconsin-Madison Materials Research Science and Engineering Center. Today I'm going to be giving the training video for the nanoparticle stained glass program. Uh, you may notice that the slides behind me are not completely illuminated due to the lighting conditions in the room. If you'd like, you can download the presentation and follow along. So to get started, today's program is called Na Stained Glass to Cancer Treatment, Nanotechnology Then and Now. On this slide, I have two pictures of people hard at work. On the left, I have a picture of a artisan studio from the med medieval ages. And on the right, I have scientists working together in a lab. On the left, the picture shows workers from the 14 and 1500s, while on the left, the scientists are in a lab today. What do you think that these two groups of people could have in common? Do you have any ideas? Those are all great ideas, and it turns out that both of these pictures show nanotechnologists. Well, to figure out how that could be possible, we first need to start with what nanotechnology is. And here I have a definition of nanotechnology, which has been published by the National Nanotechnology Initiative. They define nanotechnology as the understanding and control of matter at dimensions of roughly 1 to 100 nanometers, where unique phenomena enable novel applications. Encompassing nanoscale science, engineering, and technology, nanotechnology involves imaging, measuring, modeling, and manipulating matter at this length scale. Well, what does that really mean for us? Well, I think for our purposes, we can simplify nanotechnology into three main concepts. One, that the nan nanometer is extremely small. Two, at the nanometer scale, many materials behave differently. And three, we can harness this new behavior to make new technologies. So three main concepts, small, different, and new. So exactly how small is extremely small when talking about the nanometer size scale? Well, let's start here at the macro scale with a meter. Here I have a meter stick. It's about the same size as a yard, or even the same height as an adult bicycle seat, or the average height of, a, of an elementary age student. If I imagine, if you will, if I were to divide this meter stick into 10 equal pieces, each piece would be a tenth of a meter, and it would be at the same size as my iPod. Now, if I divide this same meter stick instead now into 100 pieces, each piece would be a, hundred, a hundredth of a meter or a centimeter, and all those pieces would be roughly the size of a ladybug. Now, if I take this same meter stick and chop it up into a thousand pieces, each of those pieces would be a millimeter in size and about the same size as a grain of sand. Now, grains of sand are pretty small, but I can still see those with my eyes. We need to go even smaller before we get close to the nanoscale. So now, again, imagine this same meter stick, but instead, I'm going to divide it into a million pieces. At this point, each piece would be one micrometer, or one micron, wide. And it would be roughly the same size as a red blood cell. I can't see red blood cells with my eyes, but we would be able to see it if we used a light microscope, similar to the ones you may have used in biology class. And well, if you can imagine, nanoscale objects are actually 1,000 times smaller than these red blood scales. So with that same meter stick, I would have to cut it up into a billion pieces in order to get each piece the size of a nanometer. Things that are on the nanometer scale are viruses or DNA, and other things like recently discovered forms of carbon, like carbon nanotubes and buckyballs, are also on this size scale. At this size scale, things are much too small to be seen. And again, if I go just a little bit smaller than a nanometer, I get to the size of atoms, which are the tiny building blocks that make up everything around us. So what do all these nano-sized things have to do with these stained glass artisans? Well, when the artisans were working in their labs, they noticed when they add coloring agents to the molten glass, chemicals like gold chloride or silver nitrate, that the molten glass turned beautiful colors. For instance, when they added the gold chloride, the molten glass turned red. Now, if they added the silver nitrate, they got the molten glass to turn yellow. So gold compounds resulted in red glass, and silver compounds resulted in yellow glass. But wait a minute. That's not exactly what we experience here at the macro scale. For instance, if I were to look at a gold or a silver brick, the gold would appear yellow and shiny, and it'd be similar to what we see in the jewelry we wear today. The same goes for silver. The silver would be yellow and, sh or, I'm sorry, gray and shiny. But 
If I chop up these gold bars so that each one of them is only a nanometer or a few nanometers in size, the particles change color. At the nanoscale, silver particles appear yellow, and at the nanoscale, gold particles appear red. They appear different colors because nanoparticles interact differently with light than the way that macroscale materials interact. And if the medieval artisans had been able to control the size of the gold particles, they would have been able to get more than just red. For instance, if they had been able to make the particles uh, a little bit bigger, they could have gotten green, and bigger still, they would have had orange. The same thing goes for the silver particles. If they had been able to control not only the size, but also the shape of the particles, they would have had different colors. Smaller particles appear blue, and triangular shaped particles appear red. These tiny particles are finding their ways into lots of cutting, ap cutting edge applications. For instance, scientists are looking into ways of treating cancer with gold nanoshells, which is a small bead of glass with a thin film of gold wrapped around it. Scientists at Rice University have determined a way to get these gold nanoshells to concentrate only in tumorous cancer cells. They then expose a patient to infrared light. The infrared light causes the gold nanoshells to heat up, which then causes the cancer cells to heat up, and eventually these cells will die. Thankfully, the infrared light passes through healthy cells and tissue and bone without having any effect on it. Possibly closer to home is the use of silver nanoparticles in a bunch of consumer products that have already made it onto the market. Uh, silver has long been known to kill bacteria. Infected wounds have been treated with silver solutions, and silver solutions have also been placed in the eyes of newborn babies to kill any bacteria they may have been exposed to during the birthing process. Uh, manufacturers are embedding silver nanoparticles in products such as athletic apparel, socks, washing machines, and even plastic containers. The nanoparticles don't wash off as easily as the silver solutions do, so these products have their antibacterial properties for much longer. If any of you have these containers at home, you now know that the yellow co color comes from the silver nanoparticles that are embedded inside the plastic. And so now, I think I've talked enough, and it's time for you to get to be a nanoscientist today, and as well as a nanoartist. You get to be somewhere between the artisan shop and the uh, laboratory. So we don't need to use molten glass today, nor will, be, will we have to wear one of these interesting looking suits. Before I came today, I made up some solutions of gold nanoparticles and silver nanoparticles that we can use in our activities. I also made up some nanoparticle stained glass, which are these pieces here. It's actually not glass, but plastic. After I make the nanoparticles, I add a polymer or a plastic to it, and then evaporate off the excess water to get these hard plastic pieces. And right now, I'd like to invite all of you up to participate in two activities. One, you can help create a nanoparticle collaborative stained glass panel. And two, you can also have a chance to take home some of your own stained glass in a small takeaway car window. And at that time, I'd like to thank you.